Hey class, and welcome to another sample problem here. Um, what we got going on here, as we're told in the problem statement, is we have this uniform rod over here. All right, it starts in this upright position, position I'm gonna call position one, where it's vertical, all right, and you have a spring that's attached to it, and we're told that the spring is initially unstretched, so the initial rest length of our spring is 0 0.1 meters, as we can see, and then the rod's going to fall swing down into this position here, which I'll call position two, and we're asked to figure out what is the tangential speed of the end of the rod, so what's the tangential speed of this part of the rod here as it's moving downward as it strikes the uh, point A position here. So, interesting, we have a rod, it's gonna be falling, it's gonna be rotating, right? We know there's rotational energy going on here. Uh, and we also have a spring that's going to be trying to resist it. Okay, so there's a spring that's going to be stretched out. So this is a tricky problem. What are we going to do? How are we going to find its velocity and so on? Well, to me, when I see a problem like this, where you have some initial position and some later position, it's moving, it's having a change in energy, and we're asked about speed, not time or acceleration or any of those kinds of things, it makes me think of using conservation of energy to try to solve. So if I think of conservation of energy, again, that's kinetic energy at point one plus potential energy at point one plus any work done by non-conservative forces equals the kinetic energy at point two plus the potential energy at point two. So in this problem, when we start at some initial height, it's at rest, we're told, it's released from rest. So we have no initial kinetic energy, either translational or rotational. We do have initial potential energy. All right, so we're going to have initial potential energy of MGH. Maybe I'll call this H1. Now, what is H? That's a good question here. Because you have this whole rod, right? The bottom part of it doesn't move at all. The top moves a long distance down, the whole length of the rod down. But for MGH, we actually have to do it based off the center of mass of our object. So this here would be H1, this vertical distance which it moves down, which is gonna just be half the length of the rod, or 0 0.1 meters. So H1, we know is 0 0.1 meters. Okay, we got that. Now the spring starts unstretched, so there's no elastic potential energy, so that's it. Is there work being done by non-conservative forces? It doesn't say anything about friction. We're gonna ignore air resistance, so yeah, we can say that this is zero as well. Okay, so really all we have is gravitational potential energy, that's going to get us started. Now the next one is kinetic energy final. Now this is a little tricky. We're asked to find the trans, uh, tangential speed, right? Which is a linear velocity. So our first thought might be to do one half mv squared. And there's actually a way you can do that. But instead, I'm thinking of this as just a, a thin rod rotating about an axis down here at its end. So to me, all there really is that we need to consider is rotational kinetic energy one-half I omega at point two, quantity squared. So now we need to do, wait, a timeout. What is I? Well, I for a slender rod, you can look up, is one-third ml squared. Some of you might say, well, no, wait, I looked it up, it's one-twelfth. One-twelfth ml squared is when your axis is at the center, when your axis is at the very end, you get one-third ml squared, which you can actually derive that using the parallel axis theorem, which is cool. So we have one half I omega squared, which is our kinetic energy. Now what about potential? We don't have gravitational because we're down here at point zero, as we'll call it. But do we have any other? And the answer is yes. We're going to have elastic potential energy, one half K X squared. Now thinking about that, again, continuing to keep track of all of our variables, we're given K as being equal to 25 newtons per meter. What about X? Well, x is going to be the stretched length. The question is, what does that even mean, right? In our picture here, I'm going to switch colors to try to help us visualize it. This right here is our new length, right? I'm going to call that d, okay? Our original length is L initial here, which we already labeled as being 0.1 meters. So the question is, x is gonna be equal to D minus L initial. So the question must be then what is D if we wanna figure out what X is? Because again, X is just the stretched length, not the overall length. They're the stretch away from equilibrium. 
So we can actually make a little triangle down here. If you notice, we make this little triangle. Okay, that little triangle is really ugly. So I'm going to pop it down and redraw it down here. So this would be D. And what we have is this would be 0 0.1 meters. This would be 0 0.2 meters. How do I know that? Well, I know that this is 0 0.1, and I know that this is 0 0.1 here. So I got 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 gives me 0.2 meters. So if I want to figure out what D is over here, it's just going to be equal to the square root of 0 0.1 squared plus 0 0.2 squared meters. Okay? So uh, I'm going to just scroll down just for a second to finish this off. So if you do the math, D should come out to be approximately 0 0.224 meters, which makes X equal to 0 0.224 minus 0 0.1 or 0 0.124 meters. So we'll use that later. But let's scroll back up here. All right, so that's all sounds fun and good. We now have labeled everything. Wait, I skipped one variable, right? I skipped omega. The reason I skipped omega is because we don't know what omega is. But what did the problem statement ask us for? Let's look back up here. We're asked to find the tangential speed. That's not even in our equation. How are we going to figure out what the tangential speed is? Well, we know that V out here at point A is just going to be equal to omega multiplied by the R to point A. And the R to point A we're given as being equal to point two meters. So if we can find omega, we can find the tangential speed, which is what we're asked to find. Bonus. All right, so now it just becomes algebra, right? I can multiply through by two on my equation over here, and I can subtract the one-half kx squared term. So I'm going to multiply by two, so I get two mgh minus kx squared. It's going to be equal to i omega two squared, which is what we're trying to solve for. Divide by i and take the square root, right? So I get, let's see, omega 2 is going to be equal to the square root of 2 mgh minus kx squared all over i. And we know i is 1 third ml squared. Cool. So from there, we can just plug in our values. So it's going to be the square root of 2 times the mass of the rod, which is 0.75 kilograms multiplied by g, 9.8 meters per second squared, multiplied by, again, this h, which I called h1 originally, which we, okay, 0.1 meters, extend a little bit here, so minus k, which is 25 newtons per meter, multiplied by x, 0.124 meters, quantity squared, and then divide all of that by i, which is 1 third m, which is 0.75 kilograms times L, the length of the rod, 0.2 meters squared. So you do all the math, and you should find that omega will come out to be equal to approximately 10.4 radians per second, and we want V, which is omega times R, R at point A, right? And so V is going to be equal to 10.4 radians per second multiplied by 0 0.2 meters so you do the math and you should get approximately 0 or 2.09 meters per second which is most definitely box worthy that's such a tricky one i'm going to give it a double box so i hope that makes sense i hope that helps let me know if you have any questions and other than that have a box worthy day